hello educators parents students and everyone who want to learn so you might have heard about physics lab chemistry lab and robotics lab right so today we are going to see what is space lab are you ready let's walk in so here is the space lab that you can see and uh, you might have seen lot of equipment here right so you have seen lot of equipment here and let us walk through what is this space lab is okay so when you talk about space obviously it excites everyone isn't it so especially for students it excites a lot so the idea is why can't we use this love for space to inculcate some serious skills to inculcate the skills of mathematics physics chemistry biology social sciences and any other life skill that we can talk of so let's walk the talk and see what space lab offers and how it is beneficial for a student a school as well as a parent so here what you see is a rover okay we call this planetary rover and this rover is inspired from rover on the mars as well as rover on the moon for example the pragyan rover so when you look at the rover interiors we can see a lot of electronics inside okay the working electronics so here students learn various connections and the sensors and the motherboard and other uh, electronic components which will drive this particular uh, sensor let's say the mobile adapter is there as well as uh, we have an antenna so here we can keep a camera students can can keep a camera and drive the rover around and analyze the rocks or various other things so here we have a glider model that you can see so it looks like a toy but it is beyond that so when they when students actually get this they learn various aspects of the aerodynamics so here you can see various names of the aircraft parts are mentioned right so these are called ailerons and this is a rudder and here is a elevator which are all responsible for the aerodynamic movement of the aircraft whether it is a, a glider or an aeroplane so with this simple uh, glider tool glider toy they learn how things actually fly and by changing the direction of this by the changing of angle of these kind of uh, uh, wings they can even control the flight of the glider okay that's very exciting for the kids so here you also you can see the big glider model uh, so that they can relate how they actually the glider looks here what you see is a sun clock yeah you heard it right So in ancient times, as we know, we don't have any. Uh, they didn't have any smart devices and clocks, right? So they were using sun to measure the time. So here is the sun dial, which is inspired from the Jantar Mantra. And when I adjust it right, in right direction with right uh, location details. So here you can see this is like a sun. So right now, if the sun is here, the shadow is falling on 7 a.m. Right. So as the sun moves in the sky, you can also see that time is changing. So when the sun is overhead, let's say in the noon, the time shows as 12, and in the afternoon you can see the shadow is moving towards 13, 14, 15. That indicates 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m. and all. So till evening. So this way we can actually measure the time, but this time is going to be the accurate time, the local time. Generally, what we see on the clock is Indian standard time, right? But the sun dial is actually going to show the local standard time. I am in Bangalore right now, so it is going to show the Bangalore Standard Time. How cool is that? And students will make similar model by using this sundial. Okay, so students will make this sundial and they'll take their own observations. See, is various DIY kits inspired from space exploration. So let's say if you want to explore Mars or Moon, and if you want to live, if humans want to set set up the base there, we need to survive, right? so we need to cook food we need to generate electricity and all so here what you see is the solar house and which has you know the led inside the wiring and the solar panel so when the switch on and when the sun is there you can see the led is glowing isn't it so that way students understand how the solar energy works how we can convert solar energy into electric energy and you can use for various purpose not only that students also understand the simple circuit using this kit and also understand the application of uh, renewable source of energy 
here what we have is a solar uh, solar filter okay we even we can observe the sun safely with this so this is going to cut off 99.9% of the sunlight it will only allow the 0.1% of the light which is enough to see the details on the sun so we can see details like sun spots sun is sun looks very whitish right but it has a lot of features on it. there are something called sun spots uh, by looking at it we can actually measure the sun is also rotating sun is not fixed it is also rotating so rotation of the sun can be studied by the students like a scientist using this uh, you know solar telescope it also can be used for the night time and also we have a, another telescope here this telescope is this telescope will give more magnification than that telescope so we can magnify up to 200 times so where we can see the deep craters on the moon we can see the rings of saturn we can see jupiter's storms as well as the uh, moons of jupiter which are revolving around yeah all those details also we can see if the sky is very clear we can also see uh, galaxies other galaxies like andromeda yeah. so here what you see is the satellite model generally students won't get chance to touch a real satellite or real rocket isn't it uh, or real telescope which are used by uh, professionals so all these models give a opportunity for the students to understand how they work by touching and feeling it so all the parts are there here you can see the fuel tank the thrusters the solar panels and the body everything so they can actually touch and feel how a satellite looks and how it functions and when we talk about satellite we actually have a real functioning satellite so here what you see is actually a student sat okay so where students can make their own satellite so this satellite actually gets connected to the mobile okay so when you look at the satellite here it has solar panel it got the wiring it got the microcontroller it got the sensors to measure temperature humidity pressure and light intensity so all this data is going to help to measure the weather in the location so for example if the students want to measure the weather in the school they can measure and they can even predict when it is going to rain let's say so this is mini weather station weather satellite within the school which is operated by students i would say okay so for example if i look at the data so the data is being loaded it is being taken from the satellite right now uh, the temperature shows as 24 degrees humidity is around 54 and the pressure is around 914 bars and inten light intensity is around 90% so when i put my hand here you can see immediately the light intensity dropped and i also i can increase the humidity by doing this so after a few seconds you will see there is a little bit rise in the humidity now it is showing 61% right so let's see now it is 62.9% so the humidity got increased so when you talk about space right generally uh, students look at the diagrams of space anything on the 2d platform right on the paper but this is the three dimensional sky okay so earth is in the center because when we look from the earth right we are the center right so we can see the constellations and sky and here Uh, this yellow ball indicates the sun so we can also see the sun's movement throughout the year there is a month marking here you can see there are different months mentioned mm -hmm. so right now we are in november so in november sun is in uh, between the constellation of libra and scorpius okay so that tells the position of the sun as it uh, moves sun doesn't actually move we are the one who actually move around the sun but it looks like the sun is moving so with this only based on this we have the concept of uh, calendar the right? yeah, solar calendar right so solar calendar is completely based on this the students understand how we can use the sky as a calendar as a map to navigate around right so this three dimensional model of a celestial sphere simplifies uh, various complex things the students cannot get okay and here we also have various other diy kits so like i was showing the sundial right so students will make the sundial using this kit and they can make their own observations and they will also make their own rocket rocket launcher and they will also make their own parachute so for example we have a parachute kit like this so students make parachute like this and the challenge is that you can see they can put something inside so the challenge could be like they can use a raw egg inside and they can put inside and they can launch from certain height the challenge is that it should not break after landing so with this you know they will be very much excited to save that egg right without breaking and uh, that way they can actually learn how aerodynamics works 
how much air resistance they can produce, whether only one parachute is enough or they have to use two parachutes. Okay, so all that critical analysis analysis will be done by the students while experimenting with these things. And then here you can see we have a telescope making kit which helps students to get exposure on the different lenses and mirrors which are used in the telescope which can be used to magnify. So you can see there is also optics kit that we use in the lab. So where they will get to touch and feel and also experiment with different lenses and mirrors. So we have concave, convex, concave lenses, concave mirrors as well as you know uh, lenses mirrors combination in prism. So they use all those things to mix and match and see which one can be used for the telescope. Okay, so if he uses this, let's say the student is touch, touching using this, this he might, he or she might be finding this is not useful for the telescope. Okay, so he or she can go for another lens and which is magnifying things and that can be used to make a telescope. So that way students are actually understanding the practical use of these lenses and mirrors and they get simplified explanation of what they are learning in physics, in optics. Reflection, refraction, image formation, focal length, magnification, everything can be covered while making a telescope. Okay. It is, for them it could be boring like you know when you are teaching them on the board or in the book. So when we tell them we are going to make a telescope, they are excited, right? While making a telescope, they are automatically learning these concepts. Okay. So this is a telescope which will be made by the students of higher grades and we can actually see moon's craters with this. That is, that I think it is good enough to see all those things. And here is one very interesting kit. Students make a small rocket launcher. So they understand the locking mechanism also and various forces like Newton laws. So they can make this kind of a rocket. They can install like this. So when they want to launch, they just have to unlock it. Okay. So let's say I want to launch it. I just have to unlock it and I can launch. So with this, they are also having fun and also learning various parts of the rocket and uh, Newton's laws which are governed. And they can also change the rubber band's level to increase or decrease the uh, force and um, they can take the observations. And they will also get hands on on real binoculars like this. So we sometimes even open them and show what are the interiors of the binoculars. Uh, and they will learn what are the different components which are used and also they will have their own observations through binoculars. So you can see there are different equipment which are used along with the telescope. Um, whether it is a big telescope or small telescope, they can use this calendar which is called moon calendar. So generally you might have seen normal calendars but there is a moon calendar. Using this they can actually measure when the, sun, when the moon is going to rise and when it is going to set. So this window shows the moon rise time, this window shows the moon set time and the current phase, which phase it is, whether it is a crescent phase, full moon phase, gibbous phase, there are different phases in the moon, right? So they can also match with the date mentioned here and that way it becomes a you know, simple calendar which works for the entire year. And this is the star calendar. They can also map stargazing using this uh, star dial and they can adjust according to the date and time and they can understand what are the things visible. So this is a mobile adapter which can be used to take photographs. The students in the lab, they can take photographs and they can showcase their work. So they can capture moon, Jupiter, Saturn, all the stuff and they can have their own gallery of images of space. So we also give these kind of charts to the students which help them to map, you know, to observe the moon in the night. So with what kind of features are there, what kind of craters, where actually Chandrayaan 3 landed. So all those landscapes on the moon they can learn. So yeah, we also give certain filters, for example moon filter which actually enhances the observation of the moon. We give various pointing devices and a solar filter like I told and all these are going to be supporting with the telescope to enhance and uh, give different magnified view. So different eyepieces will give different magnification. So here is the rocket model. Obviously students cannot touch real rockets but they should get the sense of how rockets are built, what kind of parts are used and how many stages are there. So this is exact replica of the SSLV model of this rocket. Small satellite launch vehicle using which they can launch mini satellites. So this is a replica of that. And we have various materials to support the education. So we give the workbooks and reference books. So using this workbook they can actually uh, understand how to make one. For example, they are going to make a rover. 
So there are just like two concepts behind the rover, okay? And after that they start making it. They'll watch a video, they'll understand the concept behind it, and they start making it part by part. Once they make it, they are going to observe themselves how it is going to work. So they'll take out in the sunlight, works on the sunlight, and they'll test on the tiles, the smooth surface. They'll also test on grassy ground, and also they'll test on the sandy ground, rough terrain. So they'll understand how fast fast it is moving. Uh, and for the given distance, we tell that okay, how much time it is taking to cover five meters distance. With that, they will calculate the speed and velocity. And also, they will write down their own observations in the other field. Similarly, all other activities are covered with such kind of information along with the observation tables, so that they will have their own thought process, own experience of building and uh, learning concepts in a very very clear way, and you know at the same time you know enjoying it. online and offline. Uh, that's after school.